Truss roof construction is very common in the United States and it's especially common in northern climates because a truss roof is relatively easy to build and can carry a lot of weight in terms of snow load. So what we have out there is a lot of older homes with truss roofs and they have an attic space and they may not be performing to an energy standard that we'd like to see today. And this is one of these areas in a house that's sort of out of sight, out of mind. And if your attic isn't performing well, if your roof system isn't performing well, it can be a tremendous energy drain and you may not know it. And so what we have today is a special treat where we have an energy rater on board and he's going to be exploring an attic with us so we'll be seeing it through his eyes and he's going to highlight some of the performance issues you may find in an older attic. In addition, we'll be doing a short building science demonstration that's going to talk about how air leakage affects a house and how it particularly it works in an attic in winter time. <music> In this video segment, we're going to be examining an attic in an older home with Paul Woodman, who's an energy rater for interior weatherization here in Fairbanks, Alaska. And what Paul has managed to provide us with is a classic case of an older home. This is a home built probably 25 or 30 years ago with a leaky attic. And so as we follow along, Paul's going to point out to us points where we have air leakage and potential issues with moisture and heat loss. First thing we notice on the ceiling is we've got some ghosting or some dark staining on the uh, ceiling here. The dark staining is caused by differences in temperature and moisture levels. Uh, where there's less insulation or less thermal qualities, it's actually a little bit colder surface, so the moisture will stick to those colder surfaces before it sticks to the warmer surfaces, and the dust in the garage will tend to stick to those colder surfaces, causing that ghosting or staining on the attics walls between rooms, uh, hallways and all that, they, these become chimneys for air to pass up from the house into the attic, such as through uh, outlets, uh, the base of the wall where it connects to the, to the floors, it lets air go in, it acts like a chimney, the warm air gets into these walls, rises up into the attic and takes the moisture with it causing problems. And we'll look at this wall when we're in the attic. This is a top plate between the garage and the house. This is a two by four wall running through here. And so we've got penetrations here where the wiring goes through the top plate. We've got gaps between the, she the sheetrock and the top plate. And so these are the type of areas that we need to air seal to stop air movement and heat loss and vapor mitigation from the house up into the attic. This insulation was laying over this top plate and you can see from the darkness in the insulation fiberglass is a wonderful filter it doesn't stop air movement so as the air came up through that top plate it this filtered the dirt that, that was coming up there this is the petition wall between the house uh, and the garage this is the upstairs portion of the of the house here's an outlet here on the wall, which is a perfect indication here of air moving out of the house through the fiberglass, and as the air moves out of the house, all the dirt and dust from the house is being collected in the fiberglass. With that air movement, of course, is also coming moisture and mm -hmm. heat loss. So your first step would be to stop all the air leakage. So you'd get to a box like this and you'd air seal around the box and seal any holes and stop the air leakage there? Correct. Okay. I think part, partly what we're seeing too is all this insulation hasn't been very carefully installed. So there's gaps between the bats, there's gaps against the walls. All that stuff really cuts down on your performance. The more airflow you have that, through that insulation, the more heat you lose through that product. Insulation can be added to attics or to any area. If it's not added correctly and it's not performing correctly, uh, then it's doing no good. Nasty stuff. You should be seeing in, a, in an attic without these air loss problems, or an attic that's properly constructed, you won't see when you pull back your insulation from around light fixtures, interior walls, you won't see that staining. You know, the insulation will be clean uh, and you'll have some type of air seal there. We look around the furnace here. This should be interesting. 
we can see again we're pulling out very dirty insulation and we've actually got a hole here where you can look down into and put your hand down to beams and open areas with no vapor barrier around that furnace stack. So these are all items that can be flashed, sealed, and caulked from the garage. We also have ducting in this garage, oh, yeah. in this attic, which is not typical of Fairbanks, but is very typical of other areas throughout Alaska. So it comes right up from below us, correct, and then goes over into the house? Is that what we're seeing here? The ducting we found coming out of the furnace is running down this wall. They've got minimal insulation over the ducting. And when we pull this insulation back, once again, we see severe staining all along the ducting and coming out a lot where the ducting enters the wall. Now, we also see a nice path for heat loss, probably causing a lot of the staining. You can see right here where I can put my hand right inside the house. So perfect air for a lot of heat loss. It's quite warm in here. Perfect area for a lot of heat loss, air loss come through here, travel down the ducting, and find its way up into the attic. So that's uh, an excellent spot to find and seal. The fact that it is ventilated, and we're looking at a gable end vent and a row of soffit vents down there, I mean, that's getting a lot of this moisture that gets up in here in the wintertime a way to get out. If that didn't happen, we'd probably see a lot more signs of moisture damage up here on the plywood. You might even see some mold or against those walls. but. There's decent airflow. In this case, that's also contributing to the heat losses. What does air leakage really mean, and how does it work, and how does it affect building performance? And we talk a lot about air leakage, whether it's walls or attics or any other part of the building envelope. But the next step is to understand how air leakage works and why it does some of the things it does. And so we have a building science experiment set up that will hopefully illustrate a little better how air leakage affects the house and especially the attic. What we've created here is a laboratory model that we're going to use to demonstrate how air leakage works in wintertime. And the phenomenon we're concerned with is called stack effect because stack effect is often the single greatest driving force behind air leakage in houses in winter. So what we have is an aquarium filled with water and that represents our winter environment and we've got a plexiglass box here filled with colored oil that represents our house. Now it takes two things to produce air leakage. It takes holes and we have the potential for holes here with the ports in our box and it takes a pressure difference across those holes to provide the incentive for air to move through the hole. And this is where it gets interesting. How do we get a pressure difference? Well, what happens is when it gets very cold outside, let's say it's 40 below outside, and inside it's 70 above. Well, that's a 110 degree difference in temperature. What that difference in temperature does is it creates very cold, dense, heavy air outside in relation to lighter, more buoyant air inside. That's your pressure difference. This difference in air density between outside and inside gives us the pressure difference that we need to produce air leakage if we have holes. So the next step here is to create some holes. The first place we're going to simulate some air leakage is up at the top of the house. And so we're going to create a hole. And this would represent air leakage up near the ceiling or the upper walls. You could have an electrical outlet somewhere that's not sealed right, wiring penetrations. There could be a hole or a detailing issue with the plastic vapor retarder. There could be air leakage around a can light or a chimney. So here comes the first hole in our perfect box. Well, nothing's coming out. Well, the simple fact is, in order for something to come out, something has to come in. So we have to produce another hole somewhere in our box. So now that we've got holes at the top of our building, we're going to create some holes down at the bottom. And what we're going to simulate by opening this bottom hole here is air leakage coming in through holes in the rim joist, any holes down low around electrical outlets on that base of that first floor, air leakage between the wall plates and things like that. So I'm going to go in and create some air leakage down low.
air is coming in down low and it's leaking out the top. We can see here that there's some very cold, dense outdoor air that's come in through the crawl space and it's settled in down at the bottom. As that air warms up, it heats, it rises, and gradually it works its way to the top. And you have this continuously ongoing cycle through stack effect where air is leaking out the top, coming in at the bottom, and you're paying for that, so you're losing some heat. Now we've closed the hole at the bottom. The hole at the top is still open. Remember, in order for something to come out, something has to come in. We're going to open a hole in the middle and see what happens. We're still seeing air leakage through stack effect. Dense cold air is coming in at the middle. Warm, buoyant air is escaping at the top. But the interesting thing is it's not escaping as fast as it was when we had the greatest separation between the holes. Now let's see what happens when we open a hole at the bottom and a hole in the middle and we close the hole at the top. Even though the top is closed, we've still got air leakage through stack effect, we've got dense cold air coming in at the bottom, and we've got warm buoyant air exhausting out the middle. Once again, though, it's exhausting a little bit slower than it was when we had the greatest separation between the holes. And this is really, really important when it comes to stack effect. The greater the distance between the holes, the greater your air leakage rate will be. So if you've got a three-story house and a hole down low at the foundation and a hole up in the attic, your air leakage is going to be much more aggressive than it would be in a single-story house. The other thing that affects the air leakage rate is the temperature outside. The colder it gets outside, the faster the air leakage rate will be. So what does all this mean? Well, it's costing you money one way or another. So the question that needs to be answered is, how does stack effect affect building performance? All that water vapor that we generate from breathing and showering and cooking, and basically living in a house in wintertime, well, that water vapor can travel via air leakage into different parts of the building envelope where we certainly don't want it. And we've demonstrated with stack effect that that hot, buoyant air rises and leaks out up at the top. So if you've ever seen an attic vent in the wintertime with a lot of frost around the outside, well, that's a pretty sure sign that you've got some water vapor traveling via air leakage and stack effect up into your attic. If that water vapor stays up there long enough and becomes trapped, you could have some other problems. But that's not the only issue. If you have too much air leakage out of the top and you can't draw enough replacement air in from down low through leakage in holes, it may come in through a malfunctioning combustion appliance such as a boiler or a wood stove. Sometimes the stack effect will be powerful enough that it will actually pull wood smoke or combustion gas from a boiler into the house. Another issue that happens is the reason we get high concentrations of radon in wintertime is because stack effect is pulling that soils gas in through the foundation and bringing it into the house. Another good example of stack effect at work when you've got too much air leakage out the top is when you're bringing in sewer smells because a trap has dried up. While stack effect can't get enough air from other places, it's drawing it through the plumbing system, bringing that sewage smell into the house. This is a very important point. In order to most safely air seal a house, it's always better to air seal from the top down. If you close the holes off at the top, you will reduce that incentive to cause backdrafting of appliances and to have air leakage come in from the bottom. If you air seal from the bottom first, you're making the tighter, a tighter house, but you're still leaking out of the top and your chances of backdrafting an appliance or causing other problems are much greater. In many cases, if you own an attic, have a house with a truss roof, you can get up in there and do some retrofit work and add more insulation and make some pretty big performance gains. But it's very critical that you air seal any penetrations in the ceiling first. The simple fact is that all that moisture that we generate in winter times tends to travel upwards because the air in the house is buoyant. And so any air and moisture in that air will travel through leaks in the ceiling and find their way into the attic if they're not sealed first. So we're going to take a look at some photos that show some of the problems that can take place if an attic isn't properly air sealed and also some photos of what an attic looks like after it's been insulated. Wiring penetrations into the attic represent a typical area where you'll have air leakage in an older home. 
Generally speaking, these areas weren't sealed, the holes were drilled and the wires were run, but no extra effort was made at all in terms of air sealing. So this is a great place to clear away those chips if there are any, expose those holes and seal them very well with either caulking or fire retardant spray foam. In this photo, we're looking at a classic case where the vapor retarders originally had some other penetration. Whatever that object was, was removed. However, the hole was not patched in the vapor retarder, so it will be necessary to glue or tape another patch of plastic into this area to stop the air leakage before any more insulation is added. In this photo, we're looking at a typical spot where you'd find some air leakage where the plumbing vent wasn't sealed where it comes through the partition wall into the ceiling. In this case, spray foam was used to seal the gap between the framing and the pipe. Just keep in mind that you want to use a fire rated spray foam if you're going to be using spray foam instead of caulking. As an aside, this photo also shows insulation wrapped around the upper part of the pipe to keep it from freezing and freezing shut in wintertime. This photo highlights the importance of air sealing the vapor retarder in the attic before adding a layer of blown-in insulation. The discoloration in the cellulose and the sunken area in the center of the photo indicate that there's a hole in the vapor retarder and air leakage has been traveling from inside to the outside through the cellulose insulation for some time. Moisture has been condensing in that cellulose, gradually causing it to get wetter and collapse in on itself, which greatly reduces its performance and increases the chances of having problems with moisture. In this photo, we're looking at the attic of an older home that's had an additional layer of cellulose insulation applied over the existing fiberglass bats. And this is a great solution for a lot of these older attics where there isn't enough insulation in the roof to begin with. This roof was air sealed first, and this is very important that all the leakage points in that ceiling were, were addressed first, then the cellulose was blown in over the top, creating a very uniform blanket that fills in around all the different parts of the trusses and creates a very uniform layer of insulation. You will note that along the eaves, cardboard baffles have been installed to keep this area open so that cold air can travel along the bottom of that roof plywood and keep it cold and prevent ice dams. As we've seen, air leakage is a dynamic beast. Sometimes it's really hard to tell at any given point in time in a winter how much air is leaking into the house, how much air is leaking out. The stack effect demonstration has shown that generally the path of air leakage in an attic is from inside to outside. And I want to be very clear that any amount of air leakage really isn't a good idea. We want to try to isolate the inside from the outside as much as possible and control that indoor living environment. And so when you're looking at an attic, it's very important to air seal first before you add any more additional insulation. This will help ensure that you're maximizing energy performance and also that your home lasts a lot longer.